I'll give you a brief explanation of this machine. There'll be a written exam afterwards. <laughs> um, what this machine was designed to do was to find the settings that have been used by a German operator on a particular network using the Enigma machine. Uh, there were hundreds of these networks and they were all given uh, monthly key sheets. There's one on the back wall there, uh, the blown up version of it. It's an original but blown up. And these key sheets lasted for a month. And they set out each day how the operator would change his machine because at midnight uh, everything changed on the, uh, on the network. So if you'd broken a particular key here today, at midnight you had to start again. Um, and the method that was used was what was called here uh, a crib. Uh, code breakers call it known plain text. If you knew where a message had come from and where it was going to, you might be able to guess what part of the message said. And if you could match that German text with its enciphered letter and put, it, put them in pairs, you could then plug them up on the back of the machine. Plugged up on the back of the machine and an electrical circuit. But what happens here is if you look at these drums, there are one, two, three there, that's an Enigma machine. So you've got 12 Enigma machines on the top, 12 on the middle, and 12 on the bottom. So here you have 36 Enigma machines. I'll come to those three in a moment. And they are colour coded to enable the Wrens who set up these machines during the war to make sure they put the right drum in the right position on the machine. Enigma machines had, uh, a German Army Air Force used three rotors every single day, but they were chosen from five, so there were 60 ways you could put those wheels in. The German Navy had eight wheels, so there were 336 ways you could put those rotors in the machine. So the first thing Bletchley Park had to find out was which three rotors had they used on this particular network for this 24-hour period, and what order had they been put in the Enigma machine? That was problem number one. Problem number two was what was called the ring setting, which this machine helps to find. On an Enigma wheel there is a clip, and on each wheel is a notch, and the notch is in a different place, a different letter of the alphabet. And you can pull the clip out and you can move the alphabet, it will spin round freely, so you can drop the clip back in at any particular letter. But where you dropped it back was significant because that determined where the middle wheel was turn over. Because the right hand wheel on this machine turned every time you tapped a letter out on the keyboard. So as you tapped out a letter on the keyboard, it would go click, click, click. And at a certain point, it would tip over the middle wheel. And then after that, every 26 letters, it would click, click it over one position. And then when that had done 26, it would move the left hand wheel on one position. And every time you did that, it changed the wiring on the wheel. So first of all, you've got to find which wheels have been put in the machine and in one order. Then you've got to find the ring setting, how the clip had been set on the various wheels. And then there was a thing called a plug board, which you can see at the front of that Enigma machine. That's a real machine there. And you'll see those plugs at the front. And they are jacks, uh, double-ended jacks. And 20 letters of the alphabet will be plugged up in pairs of 10 as for that key sheet up there. And six, and they used the German word for plug board, stecker, and six would be self stecker, in other words, they had no plugs in them. So that was what you had to find. Which wheels in the machine, what order, what was the ring setting, and what were the ten pairs of letters that were plugged up. Apart from that, it was all quite simple. <laughs> <laughs> um, when that machine was set up for the day, the chances of finding the setup was one in 158 million, million, million. When I tell you that finding tonight's lottery number is quite simple by comparison, it's only one in 14 million. It gives you some idea of how secure the Germans thought that machine was. But by using the crib principle and mashing a part of the German text with its cipher text, they could play it up on the back 
And then using what was um, for the 1940s state-of-the-art technology, there were machines in existence at the time called Horrorith punch card machines. Uh, some, of the, uh, some of the more uh, mature and veteran people will know what a um, Horrorith punch card system is and as well. Basically, it was the search engine of the 1940s. Today, with a search engine, we go on a computer. What they did, they had these cards. And just behind us here in Block C were a hundred of these Horace punch card systems, a machine set up, and they were these cards. And two million of those cards would be utilized every week here, changed, upgraded, altered, whatever, to keep abreast of the German military machine, because you had to try and break these, these network ciphers within a 24-hour period for them still to be useful. Because if a panzer unit had moved from the Pas de Calais to Normandy, you didn't want to know three days later, you wanted to know within 24 hours. Um, uh, time was absolutely vital. So this machine was designed to do that, and it used the technology that was the backbone of the Hollerith punch card system, which is to find information, to find da data. This is not anything whatever to do with computers. It is an electromechanical machine. Up in H-Block, where you can see Colossus, that is the world's first digital programmable computer. This is not a computer. But it was state-of-the-art technology for the time. And basically, what it does is it it uses logic to dismiss certain assumptions that the settings are wrong. Apropos the German Enigma operators' actual settings, and then it will come to a point where it says to itself, "I think I have found a position here that coincides with the position of the original German operator," and the machine will stop. And these three drums here will give the letters of the, the ring setting click for that particular stop and it's saying here F, U and J and it will give one plug ball pair which is going that letter box there and a, a, the wren here will write that down and give it to another wren will go to that machine behind there called a checking machine and she would run around what they call the menu and at each point it will give her the next plug ball pair uh, and it would also tell her whether the setting, whether the stop was correct or not. This machine was not infallible. It would take uh, up to about four stops before it got the right answer. Anything over that, and they started to get worried. Could be that you've got the wrong wheel order on this machine, or you've got the wrong crib, or anything that could go wrong. If you look very carefully, you will see that there are the letters of the alphabet, this, gun, this drum runs fast, this one is clicked over when that does a forward circuit, and this one is clicked over when that does a forward circuit. And inside each of these drums is internal wiring that exactly matches its equivalent Enigma wheel number. So this one in green here is actually number three, drum number three. And inside that drum is internal wiring of letters of the alphabet to match exactly the internal wiring on wheel number three on the Enigma machine. So what you're looking at here is 36 Enigma machines. Um, you can run three different wheel orders for the same menu, or you can run three menus with one wheel order. In other words, they're very efficient machines. Um, and uh, when it stops, it then gives the, the ring setting for that for that stop and it gives one of the plug ball pairs. Um, so those are the two things it does and then the checking machine will work out whether the stop is correct or not. Um, as I say, it will take about four, four um, stops. Then, when they had found the key for the day, they would go to that machine in the corner called the Type X machine. Um, that was the British cycle machine, it was never broken. Uh, it worked very similar to an Enigma machine, but one of the differences is that's got five rotors and the Enigma machine's got three. But a number of them, like that one over there, 
were specifically modified to work like an Enigma machine. And that will, that will decipher um, an Enigma message um, even to this day. It's working. We managed, we managed to find a lady who'd been on them during the war, and she came and repaired it for us. <laughs> um, so it actually works. So does the checking machine. But the checking machine, like this, is a rebuild. That's an original. Um, there were 211 of these machines, and there are only half a dozen here at Bletchley Park. Uh, the rest uh, were in three villages and two huge bays of them at East Coast and Stanmore, uh, in bays of 10 and 12, and they ran around the clock, two reds working on them, and RAF engineers on, on site uh, to repair them immediately if anything went wrong, because they were workhorses. During the course of the Second World War, they broke two and a half million in cipher messages that have been ciphered on the Lincoln machine. And uh, uh, the historians have said that Bletchley Park probably shortened the war in two years. So it's quite a feat and considerable number of lives um, that actually saved. Um, so I'm going to wrap it for you and you will see it working. <laughs>